Welcome back to Squawk Box this morning. Uh, sports fans are mourning the death of basketball uh, legend Kobe Bryant this morning and his daughter. Uh, they were among those killed in a helicopter crash yesterday. Tributes are pouring in from the business community. Disney CEO Bob Iger tweeting today, we at Disney mourn the tragic loss of Kobe Bryant, a giant in sports and a person so full of life. Terrible news and so hard to process. Apple CEO Tim Cook also tweeting, I admired his athletic prowess from afar and his humanity close up. He was an original. Joining us to talk about uh, the business of Kobe Bryant and his life and so much more, Dylan Byers, senior media reporter for NBC News and MSNBC. Also, Emily Glazer's, Glazer is here, reporter at uh, The Wall Street Journal. Uh, so many of us know him as a basketball player, uh, but over the past several years, he has become quite uh, the investor and businessman. Yeah, he's, he was basically at the beginning of what could have been a very powerful second act, uh, not unlike what Magic Johnson had done before him, not unlike what LeBron James is doing now, what Kevin Durant is doing now, which is basically leveraging uh, uh, his position as an incredibly high-paid and famous athlete and turning that into something where he had an investment arm, right. he had a production company, I mean, he had won an Oscar. Mm -hmm. Uh, and there was just immense potential there to sort of live a second life where he could simultaneously create a real business and also sort of advance the causes that he cared about. Um, so there is still a fund. There uh, is. There There's is. about a dozen employees. There's too. a dozen employees as part of this fund. Uh, there's investments that they have made in a number of businesses, including, by the way, Dell Technologies. Um, that business is connected to another business uh, St St Stiebel, mm -hmm. is that right? Yeah, so there's the fund itself, Brian Stiebel. It's about nine or ten employees now. They've made a number of investments. Legal services company LegalZoom, stationery company Minted, one of my personal favorites, The Honest Company. Um, they mostly focus on media, telecom, and gaming, a lot of, like, data-driven companies, but they've been right. making a ton of investments for several years now. Right. Um, also, I want to stake in Epic. Yeah, the maker Tim of Fortress. company, yeah. Right. No, there were, there were actually, there were a few gaming investments there. I mean, I think, look, I think if you look at the portfolio of investments he had, uh, there, there was a smart plan there. And, and you mentioned Dell, Alibaba. He had exited from both of those and I think made quite a handsome return. Um, was he connected, by the way? I don't know. Um, and maybe, maybe the Oscar was related. I mean, given, given some of these tweets that we're seeing from the Tim Cooks and, and Bob Igers of the world, was he doing business with Disney or, or Apple, do we know? He was. He was doing business with ESPN. With ESPN. So, so with Disney. So, yeah. And in fact, uh, so imp he was doing business through ESPN Plus, their, um, their streaming app. He had a show called Detail where he would break down sort of play-by-play -play a game that another basketball player had played and go into sort of intricate detail about how they approached the game and the inter intricacies of the game. Right. Um, how, do we think his, how did his business compare to what Michael Jordan had done, who, who also put out a statement that made me cry last night? Mm. It's a good question. I mean, I think he was just a giant in the industry. And I know one of the things that he focused on, especially with the entrepreneurs and his investment company, was teaching empathy. Right. People just really loved Kobe Bryant. I live in L.A. now. It's rocked L.A. There were hundreds of mourners outside of the Staples Center. And I think he really took a lot of his humanity from the game and tried to impart that knowledge on the entrepreneurs that he invested in in the second act. I do think this, this Michael Jordan question is an important one, though, because Michael Jordan is a giant in the game. In fact, Everybody who's an expert in basketball would say Kobe Bryant was fantastic, but not quite at the level of Michael Jordan, perhaps. But I think everyone would agree that he parlayed that career into a business career in a much more successful way than Michael Jordan had done. And I think in that way, he is sort of more of a role model, at least in terms of athletes trying to move into the business community. Well, and we think Michael that Kobe Jordan Bryant had a more successful business career than Michael Jordan. Yeah, I don't think, I think, look, Michael Jordan had sponsorships. Because the and, Nike business. No, the Nike business was huge, Nike, but again. You know, Jordan brand. But is that his But best? the Nike business was huge for, for Kobe, right. too. Right. And in fact, when Kobe left, I'm, I would get the figure wrong, but he had made more money both from salary and endorsement deals than I think any other player in the league by that time. And I think, I, but I think what I'm pointing at is Michael Jordan never, and I think it had something to do with, you know, himself and his feelings about the media and the public and never being able to really successfully exit the game of basketball. Michael Jordan never really figured out that second act in a really great high profile way, the way we see Magic Johnson, LeBron James, the way Kevin Durant is setting himself up to do. Kobe Bryant was on a path toward doing that, and he was doing it across multiple platforms. Again, investment vehicle, production company, 
deals with ESPN, winning Oscars. Right. Yeah. Okay. I think Jordan still probably made a lot more money with the Jordan brand and, and, and owning right. these teams. But nonetheless, uh, Dylan, thank you for thank coming. Thank you. Emily, thank you for waking up early.